What's up, everybody? Ben Razzi here for Stochastic, talking a little underdog fantasy, specifically the PGA Best Ball. That includes all four majors, that has some major prizes up top, and a chance to take down some big-time dollars, if we can get this right. We're here to talk about, basically, the rules, the format, and a couple of general strategies that I think you should consider before you dive into these drafts. Now, if you're looking for the drafts, if you're saying, I just want the action, don't worry, we've got you covered. Me and Eric Linguist have been doing drafts. They are up on Stochastic. We're going to be doing a couple more leading us up to Augusta and everything getting underway. But if you're just joining us for the first time, checking out the channel, check out everything we've got. If you like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. But let's start talking about underdog fantasy, specifically the Albatross. That is their big time tournament for this I'm going to bring up the rules. We're going to talk about the rules, the format, all the information you need, and I'm going to explain what we got going on here. So first things first, how much is this? It's a $10 per team entry, 500K in this prize pool, 100K up top, 150 max. So we got a lot of options there. Again, 10 bucks to get in. Very, very easy. But those are really just the peripherals. That is the stuff, you know, we get that out of the way. Let's talk about what we're doing here. So this is this is the crux of it. This is the important stuff. First of all, it's 56,000 total entries, and then we're going to split up. So how the tournament works, how this format works, is you are in a snake draft with six people, and you have 10 rounds. So everyone's going to get 10 golfers. You go, obviously, snake draft style, easy format. Everyone kind of knows that. You pick your players. The top six are going to get points in each major so you don't have to use everyone at all times but here's how we survive in advance now the tournament will have four rounds each round consisting of player groups as seen below so to get things started you draft then you are put into a six person group for the masters you have to win your group to advance so first round is the four rounds at augusta we've got our team six person group we have to win that if we win that we go to round two 12 person group top two advance so after winning hopefully at the masters move to the next major two guys advance out of the 12 person group same thing for the third major and then we can get to the open 260 person final group that is where the serious dollars will come into play but just so we know just so we're clear because when you're drafting you have to think about this stuff you don't want to just plan for the masters if you do that you may have a good chance of getting out of round one, but you're going to have nothing left for the U.S. Open. You're going to have nothing left for the PGA. You're going to have nothing left for the Open uh, in terms of maybe some of the guys that you would have wanted to target initially. Obviously, you have the same 10 golfers for each, but you really do want to make sure that you're honestly prepared for that. It is really important. So you see it here. Obviously, they go in order, the Masters, the PGA, uh, the U.S. Open, and the Open Championship. I'll bring up the prize pool just to show you guys. Very basic stuff, but a good format. You got 100K up top, 40,000 to second, 20,000 to third. So we're getting five figure payouts for the top six. Obviously, though, as we scroll down, it's pretty clear that you need to get into that fourth major. So that, that's the barrier right here. 120 bucks if you can do that. Below, you'll still get some payouts. It's not like you, you come away with nothing, but the goal cannot be to get your money back by winning your pod. Uh, at the Masters. That is clearly a short-sighted strategy. That is not what you want to do here. Uh, and that is definitely not the case when we are building. Now, what do we need to know before we talk about some of the tips and tricks? We got to know about the scoring as well. Scoring is very important, of course. What are we doing here? You see it here, obviously. You have all sorts of things. You don't need to get any of this crazy stuff. Don't worry about that. All these other restrictions, none of that. But what what the important thing here is, is you have birdies are better, things of that nature. It's not placement point centric. So if you've been playing on say, you know, DraftKings or FanDuel, one of those placement points come into play, not here at underdog, not in terms of this. Let me click on roster makeup. That's another thing you see here, six golfers, four under bench, top six scores, just so we get everything out of the way. Now, let me get back to the top and then we'll get into the real good stuff here. So I've explained the rules. I've explained the format. We've got all that out of the way. Again, you're going to draft your 10 players. You got to move, survive in advance from 6 to 12 to 12 to 260. Now, how do we do that? How do we do that? Because I just explained what we need to do. How are we going about doing that? So I'll be honest. I think early rounds, particularly your first round, there's really not much to do. You kind of are where you are. If you're in that first 
one or two picks, you're looking at Scheffler and Rom for the majority of them. If you're in the back half of it, you're kind of just going to get who you get and you get an early, uh, you know, you can get to either pick like six and seven or something like that. And you're going to get two strong players, but there's not a lot of maneuverability in the opening rounds. But as we get deeper and deeper, you're going to have opportunities to reach. You're going to have opportunities to see who falls. And then of course, you're going to have opportunities to build some correlation. So my first tip in general drafting strategy would be correlation. What do I mean by that? I think it makes sense to try to get a skill set stack and hope that that is going to be the prevalent theme at multiple majors this year. What do I mean by that? Say early in the draft, you take a couple of guys, you know, Cam Young, Victor Hovland types, Rory, say, if you pick very, very early. Later in the draft, I don't think it's a bad idea to focus off the T-centric and say, okay, I've got the elite off the T players up top. I'm going to pair them with some of the off the T type players at the bottom or mid range of my draft and hope that some of these courses play extremely long. We get lucky in terms of conditions and some of these, you know, courses play uh, crazy difficult and we need length. I think that's actually a really good strategy and one that's not utilized. Does it mean that you need all 10 of your guys to be that? Absolutely not. Don't reach uh, and do something crazy just to show that. But at the same time, if I'm between two players, I think that that's a really good way to correlate. And if you get the skill set right, you will be at an advantage, not just for the Masters, but for the PGA, for the Open, for the U.S. Open, some of the later majors and ones where the big money is up for grabs. So that is tip one. Try to correlate your lineups, especially if you're building a bunch. It's just like those stacks. Of course, we can't see into the future. We don't know what's going to happen at the Open Championship in terms of the wave, in terms of those type of conditions. Now, second tip, before I get that, I do want to say, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Again, if you're looking for drafts, if you're looking for actually viewing the drafts, just check out the channel. Me and Eric, we've been doing drafts. It's on here. We got that all covered. This is more just general strategies. But in addition, always want to make sure you're getting the max value. You can double your first deposit up to $100 with Underdog Fantasy with the code Stochastic. The link is right below. You get that first match deposit bonus. Really, really easy. If you're going to be doing these drafts, why not have them pay for some of them. Simple as that. So if you are looking to get involved and do some of these, it's a really fun format. And if you get off, you get through the masters, it's anybody's game. Now, my second tip before I get out of here, this one is a little more complicated because it's not just you should do this. It's just the overarching elephant in the room of live. The live golfers are in the majors. Now you have to keep an eye on who's who in terms of the who's got status, official world golf rankings and things like that. But in general, the big time live guys are all exempt. They have majors. They're still in the top 50 and whatnot. Some of them, they are going to be here, but where are they being drafted? Well, if you look at some of the drafts we've already done and and completed, they're falling. Patrick Reed, Louis Oosthuizen, Brooks, Bryson. These guys are sometimes going in the seventh, eighth, ninth, last round. And then of course, Cam Smith, DJ types, they're going, but not in the, top of the board, obviously they're falling a little bit. And then you even got guys like Neiman, some of these other players. I think this is where the leverage comes in this year. This is a complete unknown. It's anybody's guess. Are the live guys just completely irrelevant because they're not playing week in and week out against the league competition or are the live guys undervalued and they are still some of the biggest names to beat in majors. We're going to find that out. And of course, if we find it out at Augusta, that that's the case, You can't go back and draft some of those guys for the three majors. Your team is your team. I don't think it is crazy to, again, it kind of goes back to correlation. Maybe you stack up some of these live golfers, particularly in the back half of your draft, and say, I believe that the live players are undervalued, and I want to maximize my potential to steal that. Or on the flip side, you say the live guys are all irrelevant. I'm taking them all out of my pool no matter what. I don't want Dustin Johnson. I don't want Cam Smith. I don't want Reed or any of those guys. And I'm going to pick just from the pool of PGA Tour players for my team. And I think that's another way that you can gain leverage on the field. Because again, the goal is not just to beat the six players in your pod. It is to advance out of your six and then be in the top two of the both 12 sets. So you get a chance at that big money in the final group of $260. Obviously, there's a ton of opportunities and a ton of money to be made. But you want to make sure you understand the format, the roster construction, and all that. So again, just, just really make sure that hopefully this video has helped out. And if, if you have questions, just scroll to the bottom when you're on Underdog. 
Uh, you'll see it there, right there, rules and scoring. This is how I did that. Just to show you, I can zoom out for you guys. Uh, you just go to PGA, boom, you've got all the opportunities, or you can scroll down and go to the Albatross and find those general rules and scoring because it's really important that you know what you're trying to do before you hop in those drafts and start picking players. So there you have it, friends. Again, thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Hopefully learning a little about underdog and now better prepared to make some serious money for these drafts. And don't forget to come and stop on in when we're doing the drafts. They're a ton of fun, easy watch, and a really good opportunity uh, day in and day out. So until Augusta gets underway, go and make some drafts on underdog. Use that promo code stochastic. Thanks again. If you have any questions, follow me on Twitter at JazzRazDFS. Good luck, everyone. I hope someone watching takes down the big time prize. Get that 100K. And I will talk to you guys soon.